All right, guys. Uh, today <clears throat> I'm going to be making uh, an extra juicy bacon wrapped steak roll. Um, this is my own recipe. There's a couple of different variations of this out there, but I don't think any of them actually do what I'm about to do. The first thing I'm going to do, though, um, is explain. You know, this is a cube steak that I'm using, which is typically the top of the sirloin, and it's been sent through a machine that. Uh, pierces and actually tenderizes, breaks down the tissue of the meat even more to make it more tender. Uh, one thing it actually does is it opens up these more surface area for the steak itself to absorb seasonings and so forth and sauces. So, um, But I'm going to break it down even a little bit more. I'm going to try to get that a little bit thinner. Um, you're better if you use a, uh, that's what it's called, the meat hammer thingy. <laughs> I don't have one. So, uh, you want to use something that's uh, got a little weight to it, that's solid, that has a flat surface to just uh, thin these out quite a bit. Okay, as you can see, I've got one of the cuts right here inside this uh, one gallon freezer bag or Ziploc bag. It's got most of the air out of it. And then uh, for my flat tool, I have an espresso maker, that's all I have. But it's solid and it's got a fairly flat bottom and I think I'm going to thin these out pretty well. So here I go. Flip it over to the other side. And you see how it's getting much larger. I'm thinning the meat, and further breaking down the tissue. Okay, it'll take a lot. That's it right there. That's good. Now um, I'm going to marinate these when I get them all flattened. I'm going to marinate these uh, in. Uh, I'll come back and show you how I marinate. Okay guys, I got them all, they're all been pounded now. And you can see they're relatively twice the size that they were before. Um, yeah, it may be, maybe a little larger than twice, but, but about double what it was. Thinned out, flattened, and now I'm ready for my marinade. I'm going to use um, Worcestershire and soy sauce. And that was, that's it for the marinade. I'll show you here. Okay, as you can see, I'm just putting um, I'm just going to put a splash of Worcestershire and a splash of soy on both sides. A little Worcestershire. I don't have to be overbearing with it because it's going to have other seasonings. Not, not excessive. Just enough to pretty much cover every edge reasonably. And then I'm putting it in this plastic bag with the other steaks. And I'm going to let that marinate for a minimum of 30 minutes. You can go up to three hours. I wouldn't recommend going any longer than that. We'll get these rest in there. Okay, I got all the steaks marinated They're in this bag here. And I'm going to let it sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I'll get my charcoal going. I may, I may leave these an hour. I'm going to try these probably an hour today, depending on how long it takes my charcoal to get going. Um, oh, and one thing I just want to mention, anytime you cook, do yourself and your guests a favor and wash your hands frequently with hot soapy water um, because you can pick up bacteria from meat that has it that is still alive in the meat till it's cooked or you can even add bacteria to the meat from your hands so wash your hands frequently after every step and every procedure wash your hands frequently so I'm gonna put these in the fridge for now and then I'm gonna show you my next step which is my secret ingredient okay I got my my chimney going here with my coals in it um, as soon as they get hot, then I'm going to put those uh, extra juicy bacon wrapped cube steaks on the grill. I'm going to sear them just shortly directly over the heat and then we'll move them into indirect heat after that. Um, should take about an hour for them to cook all the way through. I got some pork chops and some sausages I'm going to throw on there too. I'll be cooking those at the same time, but uh, this video is about the uh, bacon wrap. Uh, steaks extra juicy so more to come okay right now I'm slicing up some uh, regular pimento olives and these are going to be wrapped inside of the uh, extra juicy uh, bacon wrapped 
uh, cube steaks. Um, if you're not an olive fan, I mean, you know, you can use jalapenos, you can use onions, you can, you don't have to use anything at all. Um, I'm going to put a little seasoning and, and I'm going to put my secret ingredient. Uh, I'll show you what that is coming up here soon, but I do like olives and um, I think it adds a certain flavor and a taste to it. I also like garlic. Roasted garlic is good in this, sliced garlic. Another alternative I've seen out there on, uh, I can't remember whose webpage or whose YouTube I saw it on, but it, but they use cream cheese which I think I'd like to try that sometime so but my thing is sliced olives and my secret ingredient which is coming up next oh by the way you noticed I could have bought pre-sliced olives but I'm slicing them myself because I like a thin a thin sliced olive uh, for this recipe um, you can do it however you want you can even get them crushed if you want to put them in there that way so anyway just wanted to uh, show you where I was at Okay, um, I've got the uh, olives all chopped up that I need. I did about three a piece for each steak, and then I added an extra three olives just for good measure. Um, I'll put those on evenly. Normally, I would put some garlic salt on these, but since I'm using olives this time, they have their own saltiness, so I'm not going to add any garlic salt. Uh, if you were using something like jalapenos or onions or something like that you might want to add garlic salt or add garlic with salt uh, so I'm just gonna I got some crushed garlic here I'm gonna put in uh, oh, probably two or three cloves maybe a little bit more than that I love garlic so there's a little garlic and I'm gonna stir that all up toss it slightly I want to try to keep the pimentos inside of the olives all the best I can and then that's going to be a spread that I put on the cube steaks before I roll them up along with my secret ingredient coming up soon. Alright the steaks have been marinating for about a half hour now and I'm ready to put on my secret ingredient and the rest of any seasonings I put on there. Um, one thing I want to mention I would anytime I cook meat I normally use my bug of salt gun to season the meat with salt. I'm not going to use much salt on this round because of the olives but I want to mention it. I don't know if you've seen my other uh, videos. I got one, um, how to season New York strip steaks, how to season steaks with uh, the bug assault gun. I picked that up at, uh, at uh, Bass Pro Shop here in Memphis. And uh, man, I tell you what, it's been a fun little gun. I don't know if you've ever seen these, search bug assault gun on the internet and on YouTube, and you'll see it's, it's a gun that uses salt, regular table salt, you put in that reservoir there, then you cock it and you can kill flies with it up to like four feet away. I've also killed wasps and other things that have gotten into my camper while I'm camping out here. Um, but it shoots the salt at such a high velocity it actually penetrates meat. And man, I'm telling you what, you want a really juicy, flavorful steak, shoot this thing on both sides about 10, 15 times and then grill your steak and you'll see what I'm talking about. But not going to use it for this recipe, so I'm going to set it aside. What we are going to do is break out my secret ingredient for the juiciest bacon wrapped cube steak I've ever seen. If I can get the lid open, there it is bacon fat. Okay, if you notice, I've got two spoons out here. Reason for that, I want one for measuring how much bacon fat I'm going to put on each piece. I'm going to put, depending on the size of the cut, one to one and a half teaspoons approximately. So about that much for one this size, right? So I'm going to pop it on there like that. And I'm going to use the other spoon to spread it all around. I'm only going to do this on one side. This bacon fat is going to really, that one of the problems with uh, cube steak is it's so lean. Bacon fat is going to really increase the amount of moisture in this meat. Fats, obviously. Fats are flavor. Um, but, you know, you notice I'm not going too crazy with it. Just a nice thin coat. And then I'm going to do that to all of these. And I'm also going to add fresh cracked black pepper. And I'm going to crumble some rosemary in there with it and uh, then I'm gonna put my olives on and I'm gonna roll these up long ways as long as I can get them you know what I mean 
So I'll roll this one like this, so it'll be a nice long, almost the size of a sausage. Uh, when I wrap it in bacon and with the meat itself, it will shrink some inside the, the smoker. But if I roll it up, you know, uh, this way, the short way, then it's going to be a really thick, fat sausage. It's not going to go well on a piece of bread. Uh, so I'm going to start from the narrow side and roll it long ways. Get a nice, long, basic sausage out of it, but uh, made of cubed beef wrapped with bacon. Okay, as you can see, I've got these. Uh, I got this steak covered with the bacon fat, um, about one teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half, depending on the size. Uh, I also was pretty liberal with fresh cracked black pepper, and then I crushed a little bit of uh, dried rosemary, and then I layered about a teaspoon, a healthy teaspoon worth of the uh, sliced olives and garlic mix. And I'm gonna roll that up. I can't hold the camera and show you. It's a pretty simple process. You roll it up like you would anything else, and then I'm going to wrap it in bacon. Once I get them all rolled up, I'll set them to the side, then I'll wrap them all in bacon. By the way, I'd like to say uh, this is just bacon fat that I've collected from cooking bacon for breakfast over the past, you know, couple of weeks. Um, it'll last in the fridge for, you know, a good long time. Um, you can clarify it. Uh, you can make a an actual lard out of bacon fat that you use for, to cook with. You just want to put any bacon fats that you've collected into a pan of boiling water, boil it until it all dissolves, emulsifies into one thing, and then let it cool in the fridge, and the fats by themselves will float to the surface and solidify, and the contaminants, um, you know, any seasonings or other things that might be in there, the burnt pieces will sink to the bottom, and you'll have a nice white lard. But uh, I prefer the flavor of this. As long as you don't keep it too long and use it, then you should be okay. Okay, these are the cube steaks all rolled up with the thin layer of bacon fat, um, fresh cracked black pepper, some crumbled rosemary, and then spreading uh, sliced olives, rolling them up. I wish I could have showed you the process of rolling them up, but it's really not that difficult. It's pretty simple. You just roll it up. Um, just uh, any tips I could give you would be try to tuck the olives or jalapenos or whatever you put in there, mushrooms. Mushrooms would be good in this, especially with a gravy sauce. But anyway, any rate, tuck it in as you're rolling towards the last so they're not squirting out the edges. Um, if you have a triangular shaped piece like uh, this one was here, it's got a corner flap. I just fold that over. Corner flap here. I just fold that over. Trap everything in. When I wrap it all up with bacon, it's just going to be like a sausage. Okay, I have all of the cube steaks wrapped with the bacon now. Uh, my coals look like they're just about ready. I'm about ready to throw stuff on the grill. I, I am going to add just a, a dash of uh, Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning uh, to one side, the top side, because these won't be turned other than when I sear them, and then they'll be this will be the side that's up on the grill. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this on this side, just give a little seasoning to the outside as well. You can use your favorite dry rub, you can use uh, just salt and pepper if you like. Um, so, there we go. And I'm going to be putting them on the grill in a minute. Okay, I've got the uh, Steaks rolled in bacon on the hot side of the grill. Got a cold side over here. I'm gonna let them cook for about two minutes on each side. Maybe turn them three times total, and then I'm gonna move, over, move them over to the indirect heat. Then I'll cook my pork chops and sausages on this while those are finishing cooking on the on the uh, the uh, indirect heat side. All right, it's been about two minutes. I'm sitting at about. 250 degrees. I'm going to give these a little spin. I'll probably let them go a little longer. That one, I'll probably let them go just a little bit longer on that side. For another minute. Okay. It's been about five minutes total now on one side. I'm going to go ahead and try to flip these. Yeah, that's good. Getting a little bit of brown on the bacon. But we're not overcooking. Bacon's shriveling up, staying next to the beef, which is what I want. 
Notice I didn't use any toothpicks in this. So, let that go another four minutes on that side, then I'll move them off the direct heat. Okay, it's been about uh, another four minutes on that side. They're looking good. I'm going to move them over to indirect heat now. Sorry about the weird camera angles. Hard to do this when you're by yourself. I've got some mesquite wood I'm, I'm going to throw on there here in a little bit, get a little extra smoke going. But I'm going to put my pork chops and sausages on this side to cook. They'll get done before the, the steaks get done. Okay. Well, I've got everything on. The uh, steaks wrapped in bacon over here on indirect heat. I've got my pork chops going. I've got my smoked sausage going. Probably going to rotate this stuff around a little bit over the heat. I'm going to leave that alone where it's at. I'm trying to keep the inter internal temperature about 250. Um, these are done when the internal temperature reaches about 170, depending on how you like your beef. But uh, some people like a little more well done than that. But I'm going to go for 170 internal temp. And that's it. I'll come back when we're closer. All right. Um, <clears throat> I did add some mesquite. It's really smoky. Um, Seems like the sausages were getting done a lot quicker than the pork chops. I know that the beef is not done yet. It's going to cook for about an hour after I sear it. Um, so I moved the sausages over to the side, put the pork chops more on direct heat. I'm going to flip those here in a minute. They should be done pretty soon. Actually, the, the sausages are going to be coming off and the pork chops will be coming off way before the beef wrapped in bacon comes off. Okay, it's been about an hour and 10 minutes, about 250, indirect heat. They are fully done. So, internal temp is above 170. They are ready to come off. Just gonna stack them up on here, and then we'll do a taste test. Oh man, they look good. Okay, I got them in here. Um, I pulled me one to the side. I made a mistake earlier and I ate one of the uh, pork chops. <laughs> so I'm not real hungry, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this. I'm gonna try to cut it where you can see it. That may be tough. I could use one hand to cut it. We'll cut it right about there in the middle. All right. So there it is. There's the insides with the olives and the beef and everything. Cut me a chunk off to try. I'll cut a chunk off this side so I get some of that bacon with it. There it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I like to keep recording. But I think I'm going to turn this off now. It's so hot. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Thanks for watching. By the way, like, subscribe, and all that jazz. The flavor is incredible. You can taste the olive, but it's not overbearing. It's like a sweetness. Oh man. That is like. It's incredible. It's succulent. I wish I'd put this on a. Like a hoagie bun with some mustard and cat onions or something. I don't know. But man, I'm telling you what, guys. This is worth trying. This is worth trying, trust me. Oh, and it's so juicy. Not dried out at all. That's the bad thing about cube steak on a grill. It turns like leather. This is not leather. Try it.